Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mini Scroll, the daily internet culture podcast bringing you the biggest stories from social media, the creator economy, and the digital space every Monday through Thursday. I'm your host, Lauren Meisner, the founder of the youth digital media brand Centennial World. All right, welcome back to Mini Scroll, the last Mini Scroll of the week. It has been such a crazy week getting this podcast off the ground, figuring out my new normal. I think it will feel like that for a little while and I'll feel a bit overwhelmed, but I will hopefully settle into some good like rhythm for the podcast and it will just continue to get better and better. So yes, this is the last mini scroll of the week. Obviously it is Thursday now, but as always, you will have a deep dive tomorrow on Friday. All right, let's get into the morning news. So the first story that I have for you guys is that Aspen Ovard has filed for divorce the same day that she announced that her third child was born. So Aspen is an OG YouTuber and she has since taken to TikTok and really built a big following for herself there. Aspen and her husband, Parker Ferris, got married in 2015. Aspen was 19 and Parker was 20. People Magazine was the first to announce that she had filed after they found Utah court documents. Okay, so this story is very contentious. It's by far the biggest story on the internet today, so that's why I wanted to talk about it. Of course, I had to cover that. Um, but it is very contentious. It's a very controversial thing to be covering right now because they did just have a baby and it was premature and the baby was in the NICU. I believe there's conflicting reports. Some people are saying that she has backlogged her content. So the content that we're seeing now of her baby being born and all the vlogs and stuff of her in the hospital is from like a month or so ago. So I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but either way, like it's a very vulnerable time for her postpartum, whether the baby was uh, premature or not. It's a very difficult time in a woman's life. So for all of these media outlets to be reporting on it when they haven't announced it themselves and she has turned comments like she's limited her comments on Instagram I don't know if she's turned them off on TikTok at the moment, but either way, she is trying to ignore it. I think she's been deleting some comments on TikTok of people asking questions, which is fair enough. So I did grapple with if I should cover this, and I did make a TikTok on Centennial World's account yesterday sharing this news when I saw the People Magazine article, but... It's definitely an ethical dilemma. Like it definitely, I I see everyone's point. I absolutely see both sides to this, of course. So the one thing I really wanted to focus on for this story, because that's like all the information we have, is that she filed for divorce on the same day that she announced they had their third child, which I do believe was probably a decision. Like I think that was probably a strategic move. I think that she knew announcing that her baby had been born on the day when she knew that she was going to file was going to hopefully bury that story. Not strategic in a malicious way at all, just, you know, a smart PR move essentially. So one of the biggest questions around this whole thing and one of the biggest criticisms is people cannot believe, not People Magazine, like fans, (laughs) fans cannot believe that there are people out there who are digging up these court documents and posting about them. So I wanted to talk about what I think happened with this story and how this typically happens as far as I know from someone who has worked in media for years. Now, I have not worked in media in the U.S. and I haven't worked in specifically entertainment media, so I could be completely off. So Reddit was essentially blowing up with rumors before she filed that there was something wrong in their marriage and they were going to get a divorce. I think there is a slight misconception typically with how... I don't know. We we did a whole episode on snark reddits and that did change my perspective a little bit in terms of like realizing that some people really are just like that sick and twisted. But I will say I think typically when it comes to Reddit what happens is it's not that redditors are going to look for these filings cuz that's the biggest narrative around this story is like people are so sick like who is just like trolling for divorce filings like how are people finding this? I don't think it's Redditors or people going and looking for it. I think when things like this end up on Reddit and then in the mainstream media, it's typically that information has been given to Reddit. And that is one of the theories here is that it seems as though it's possible 
no verification, again, this is all just rumors, that somebody in her camp or somebody that knew she was going to do this, uh, going to file for divorce, took to Reddit and posted about it. In this case, I believe one of two things happened for people to have found the documents. Again, I don't know, mainstream media outlets like entertainment media, you know, People Magazine could have somebody standing at the front of every single courthouse in the U.S. just waiting for tip-offs. I have no idea. <laughs> But my assumption on how this happened was either A, somebody tipped people off that the subreddit was blowing up about this or somebody who works at People, you know, an entertainment journalist trolls different reddits all day, which wouldn't surprise me at all. Like they have a story quota that they have to pitch and they have to write every day. So I wouldn't be surprised if they knew that this was all going on on Reddit. So they started, you know, keeping tabs on the Utah divorce filings. My other theory is that before she filed and before people wrote this story, Spill Sesh, Christy, who we had on the podcast at the end of last year, Queen, she's a huge fan of Aspen and she made a TikTok talking about the rumors on Reddit. And she was like, I'm so sad. Aspen is one of my favorite influencers. I really hope this isn't true. And that TikTok blew up within like less than a day, got over a million views. So it's also possible that somebody from People saw that TikTok and then was like, oh, something is going on here and started looking into these filings. Again, this is a really difficult time in her life where regardless, like a very vulnerable time. So to be dealing with all of this, and I fully acknowledge I am contributing to that right now for sure. Um, but yeah, she's kind of more of like a niche YouTuber. Like she is OG for sure, but she's not that well known. When you think about like the biggest YouTubers, you don't typically think of her in terms of like fame. And so I think it's probably really overwhelming and possibly surprising that so many mainstream outlets have picked this up. All right, the next story that I have for you guys is that comedian Daniel Tosh is claiming that Kylie Jenner is pregnant with Timothy Chalamet's baby. Okay. <laughs> comedian Daniel Tosh has started a rumor on his podcast, which is called Tosh Show, that Kylie is pregnant with Timothy's baby. He said on his podcast, quote, Here's something crazy. I went to the grocery store in Malibu and I was talking to an employee there. I tried to avoid it, but I was talking to this guy and I said, why were you guys close yesterday? He goes, well, I'm not supposed to discuss it, but keeping up with the Kardashians, the show was filming their season finale here yesterday. Spoiler alert, this is for the upcoming season of the show. This is the big season finale. This random grocery store person is telling me that they rented out the entire store, shut it down, and then they acted like they were going grocery shopping. This was the scene that apparently happened. Kylie reveals that she's pregnant again with Timothy's kid. What a bombshell. Okay, a few things here. First of all, it's not called Keeping Up with the Kardashians anymore. It is called The Kardashians. <laughs> Second of all, you guys know, if you listen to the podcast, you know, I am a... Kylie and Timothy Denier. I do not believe that they are together. I believe that every single photo and piece of media that we have seen of them is AI. <laughs> I do not fucking believe that this relationship exists. I don't believe that it's real. They could get married, have like six kids. They could celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary and I would still not believe it. I will go to my grave denying this relationship. <laughs> So already, I don't fucking believe this at all, but especially this whole situation, the way that he talked about it on his podcast. And, you know, like I wanted to talk about this because it's this is how the rumor started. If you guys are seeing this rumor, this is how it started. It's not legitimate. I do believe that their teams have denied this. The other thing I wanted to say is that the Kardashians have done this like fake grocery store scene so many times. I don't believe that that will be the big season finale. And I think if Kylie does announce that she's pregnant, if she does reveal this in the season finale, which again, I don't believe, but if she does, I don't think it's going to be at a fucking grocery store. That's just my opinion. <laughs> so I think either this man, this comedian is fucking with his audience or this grocery store employee was fucking with him. All right, and the last story that I have for you guys is some more speculation and also some more divorce news. It's uh, kind of a weird day. So fans are speculating that the Ace family divorce is fake after Catherine joins the RV storyline. So on January 12th, Catherine McBroom of the YouTube family channel, The Ace Family, announced that she was divorcing her longtime husband, Austin. 
In her statement, she made it very clear that she was leaving her marriage. Okay, so that's something important to note. The Ace family is known for engaging in really shady practices to get views and to make money, and that always seemed to be spearheaded by Austin. So when she announced that she was leaving her marriage, people really took Catherine's side and they were so happy to kind of support her and follow her journey as a single mother. So she's been receiving tons of support. She's had so many more views and like so much more engagement on her socials since she announced that she's leaving Austin. However, this kind of reputation that they had, it really started to impact their views and their money. And if you guys remember the whole like Ace Family Mansion saga, I think it was last year, if you know, you know, there's just been a lot of very obvious money problems that they have had. So Catherine has been getting all of this support from fans and people just saying, thank God you left Austin, like get away from him. And Austin has also seemed to have a bit of a career boost since the divorce announced because he essentially has taken to Snapchat to film his downfall. He's basically posting these like erratic videos all over Snapchat about his demise and his experience in the divorce. And he's playing this like really weird character. He's like a really sooky baby kind of character, like a dumb ditzy character. It's very bizarre. It's so freaking weird to watch, um, but it's getting him tons of views. I think it's really just like people hate watching him and watching him unravel, even though he is, I believe, playing a character and most people know that. I think the fact that he's playing this character and posting this as if it's real is still you know, a version of him unraveling at the end of the day. So part of his downfall bit is that he claims the house that he was supposed to move into fell through. And now he lives in an RV in Catherine's backyard. Now, Catherine did debunk this whole RV theory over a month ago on Snapchat when she joked about people believing that story. And then the H3 podcast amplified that they talked about it. So it has been known, I would say for like almost two full months that he doesn't actually live in this RV, but he has stuck with this fucking storyline. However, now fans are questioning if Catherine might also be in on this as well. Like I said, the Ace family became known for using really deceptive and shady tactics to get views and make money. And their views and money seem to be way up since announcing the divorce. So there has been speculation all year that maybe this divorce is a hoax. And now this week, Catherine seemed to insert herself into the RV storyline. So she posted on Instagram stories that she went over to Austin's house to get her car washed and that she like snuck into the RV that was parked in the backyard while she was waiting for her car to get washed. And she filmed it, okay? And then Austin took to Snapchat and his friend is filming him and he like walks into his RV and he's like, the energy is really off in here and he keeps talking about how he can sense some like spiritual presence. And then his friend who I, like I said, is filming him just happens to watch Catherine's Instagram story at this same time where she's showing that she's in the RV. And then, you know, he's like, Catherine was in the RV and he's like, Kathy was in here. So now fans are questioning if this is like the segue <laughs> to Catherine now joining this whole Snapchat narrative. I'm going to say for my opinion, I don't believe that. I think that Catherine posted that Instagram story because she wanted to drive home that he does have a home when she said like, I'm at his house. So I'm going to look in the RV that lives in the backyard, basically. So I think that was like the first reason why she did that to show like he doesn't live in this RV and he also doesn't live in my backyard. He has a house where the RV lives in his backyard and this is like a whole bit thing. That is my take on this. I think that Austin and his whole caricature that he is playing right now would give anyone the ick, especially someone who has been with him for this long. <laughs> I don't think that they are together. I do believe that they are split up. That's just my opinion. All right, guys, so that is it for mini scroll for this week. Week one, done. But like I said at the top of the episode, there will be a deep dive for you guys tomorrow. So thank you so much for listening to mini scroll. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe. It helps me so much. I love you guys, and I will talk to you next week. Bye.